Ah, uh, summertime is winding down, and you know what that means. It's beer soap season. That's right. I don't know what it is about the fall, but for some reason, beer soaps are just in during the fall. So I'm going to make a batch of beer soap today. I am using an American lager, but you can use any type of soap. Well, you can definitely use any kind of soap, but you can use any type of beer that you like. Um, Pilsners, ales, lagers all work really well in beer soaps. So, to get started, there is a little bit of extra prep when it comes to making beer soaps, and that is getting the beer ready to be turned into soap. Reason being, beer has alcohol and beer has carbonation. Two things that, especially lye, does not agree with. So, we are got to get that carbonation out. We're going to get that alcohol out. How we do that is just pour it in a big old pot. Oh, I was trying to keep the label away so I wouldn't get in trouble. Sorry, Budweiser. But this is the beer that I had on hand. Any type of beer that you would like to use will do. And just pour it in a big old pot. Keep in mind also, a lot of it is going to evaporate away during this little process of getting the carbonation and alcohol out. So you'll want to account for that evaporation and make a little bit more than what you're going to need for your recipe. So I've poured my beer in the pot. I'm going to get some heat going. So I'm going to edit through all this boring stuff of waiting for pots to boil because you know what they say about waiting for a pot to boil. But what we're going to do is we are going to get this on a good rolling boil for about 10 minutes. I know some people like to boil it for longer. I personally have found that 10 minutes is really all you need. If you would like to boil your beer out for longer, that is absolutely fine. There's no right or wrong. Just make sure that you get all that alcohol and carbonation boiled out of it. But I'm going to get this a good rolling boil for 10 minutes straight. And then after that, it's going to come off the heat and then I'll tell you what I'm going to do next when I do it next. But I quickly wanted to add two. Beer soaps. So why beer soaps, right? Like, is it just all label appeal? Well, yes and no. See, some people believe that the yeast, hops, and barley in beer make for some really great skin conditioners. Now, I can't say if this is fact, but from someone who has personally used and made a lot of beer soaps in her day, I can attest that yes, these babies are wonderfully conditioning in the shower. The second thing though, and this is a fact, is that the natural sugars in beer help to create a big, wonderful, copious lather. So what you're going to get is a bar of soap with tons of lather, and in my personal opinion, really, really conditioning too. So with that being said, I'm going to go back to watching this pot boil. So once the beer begins to boil, you're going to notice it's going to get frothy, and it's going to get frothy fast. That's the carbonation boiling off of it. Pretty cool. But it's still got a long ways to go, so don't freak when you see it frothing up like that. You can just give it a stir and it'll die back down. But you want to get it, like I said, to a nice rolling boil for at least 10 minutes straight. So I'm going to stand here, I'm going to keep standing here, and I'm going to watch this pot. So let's say, for example, that your particular recipe calls for 8 ounces of water, okay? You can choose to completely sub that out for 8 ounces of beer, or you can do something like 4 ounces of water and 4 ounces of beer, or 6 ounces of water and 2 ounces of beer. It's however you decide you want to do it. Um, obviously, the more beer you use in your soap, the more fluffy and luscious your lather will be because of all those natural sugars in the beer. 
but any kind of beer at any amount added to your soap is going to add some really awesome qualities to it. So however you want to do it, totally fine. I've used it in all different sorts of way, ways as, um, as part of my liquid, as my full liquid, and honestly, I've loved it either way. Ooh, all right, we are at that rolling boil that I was talking about. This is what we want to see. It's foamed up, it got crazy. I thought it was gonna overflow on me, it didn't, thank goodness. Um, but now we are at that wonderful rolling boil. I'm gonna go ahead and set, oh my God, I did it again. I did it, did you hear that? I'm gonna go ahead. Just go back to any video I've made previously and that's that's my go-to thing. I am going to set the timer for 10 minutes and I'm going to let it boil and do its thing and boil off all that alcohol and at the end of the 10 minutes I'll bring you back. So some of you, I just this just came to me as this is about to ring and tell me it's over. Some of you may be wondering, well, you know, if you're boiling off all the alcohol and carbonation, like why don't you just use non-alcoholic beer? Ha, huh. that would be better, right? Right? Oops. And you could, but I don't know what it is and I couldn't even begin to guess because I am not a scientist, but I actually have tried to cut that corner and use like an O'Doul's or something. I don't know what it is, but it's not, it's just not the same. It's not the same. It doesn't produce the same conditioning, creamy, big, giant bubbles that, that traditional, like, alcoholic beer does. And I, honestly, I could not tell you why that is. But um, for me, just personal preference, I prefer beer soaps that are made with straight up beer. And like I said, that could be a lager, pilsner, ale, whatever suits you. Honestly, whatever whatever you have on hand will be absolutely fine. Anyway, but 10 minutes is up. We have been at a steady, beautiful, nice rolling boil. And um, if you want to continue boiling, you can certainly do so. If you just feel like, I, you know, oh, I, I need to be extra sure that that alcohol is just boiled all the way out, you can continue to boil, that's no problem. But in my personal experience, I've found that 10 minutes just does the job. So I am going to stop it here. I'm going to turn the heat off. And the next step for being able to make our beery soap is to get this cooled down. Because one thing, if you've never made a beer soap before, you are in for a treat when you add that lye. Woo! It is stinky. So, and that's just because the lye scorches the natural sugars that are in the beer and the yeast and the barley and the, the yeast. So, um, yeah, beer soap, when lye is first incorporated to it, is stinky. Um, and so to uh, sort of reduce that stinkiness, I like to freeze my beer soap and when I add the lye, I add it when my beer soap is like at a slush consistency, the consistency of like, like a slushy would be. Um, and this helps for two things. One, it helps for our lye solution to not get ridiculously hot because again, anything with natural sugar in it is going to get really, really hot, a lot hotter than just water would. And number two, um, using the beer when it's frozen or slushy is going to reduce just how, how stinky it is when the lye is added. But don't, like I said earlier, I don't know if I edited, edited that part out or not, but um, don't panic about the scent of that, uh, that lye and beer give off when they're added together and the initial scent in your soap. That will cure out, especially in, with the right fragrance oil, um, that, that's, that beer stank will cure out of your soaps. So um, I've had batches where I noticed a little bit of a stinky beer smell like right 
after I cut it and then that cured out and it was fine and it smelled beautiful and whatever fragrance I added to it, that's what it smelled like. And then I've had other beer soaps where I, the day I cut it, I couldn't smell um, any sort of a scent that the beer imparted into the soap. So it just, um, again, it's one of those things where I think it's, the amount of beer that you're using and also what type of beer you're using so um but yeah don't don't panic when you first smell how stinky lye and beer are together it it will cure out of your soap i promise so anyway next step is to cool this down and i don't want to just it's it's steaming hot right now so I don't want to just throw it in the freezer and call it a day I'm going to let this cool down to room temp then I'm going to pour it off and I'm going to stick it in the freezer and I have a little tip that I'm going to share with you about how I store it in the freezer and it's what has helped me be able to um, easily get out the amount of beer that I want from batch to batch because I tend to like to get a lot of beer prepped initially just so that I have it on hand and it's waiting for me in the freezer when I just am in the mood to make some beer soap so um, I will show you how I store it in the freezer for easy access for when I'm ready to make beer soap with it and um, yeah it's, it's very it's I call it a tip but it's really just so incredibly simple I'm sure many 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 people who make beer soaps also store their beer in the freezer this way as well so I don't think this is anything monumental but I'll show you what I do as soon as this reaches room temp and is ready to go into the freezer so I will be back with my not so tippy tip All right, we are back and the beer that we have boiled all the carbonation and alcohol out of is now cooled down to room temp. So I'm gonna show you how I get it stored for the freezer. So what I do is I just pour it into a Ziploc baggie. Like so. And the reason why I personally like to store it in a bag is because that way I can stick it in my freezer and I can get it nice and frozen and then when I'm ready to pull it out and get a little bit out of the, this for um, my soap making batch however much I need or want to use in my batch I uh, run a sink full of hot water I stick the frozen beer bag directly into that hot water. I let it sit in there for a couple minutes until it gets nice and slushy. Then I'm able to just pour out from the bag exactly how much I need for my recipe. And then whatever's remaining left over goes back in the freezer. So it's just easier for me to be able to store it this way and um, be able to defrost a little bit of it at a time. Um, as I need it. So I'm going to go ahead and get this in the freezer and get it frozen and then I'll bring you back for when we are ready to um, get it in a batch of soap. So I'll see you guys back. Yay! My beer is frozen. It's time to make some beer soap. So the, as you can tell, the beer is frozen and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to get this into a sink full of hot water to get it to a slushy state so I can pour off the amount that I want to use in my recipe. And um, you can use any fragrance oil that you would like, but some of the best fragrances um, that go really, really well with a beer base are um, anything that is warm, rich, uh, masculine, spicy, woodsy, or gourmand. Those are excellent fragrances to use with a beer base. Um, so today I'm going to be making this beer soap with Nature's Fragrances Shave and Haircut Fragrance Oil. It's one of my absolute all-time favorites. I know I say that a lot about their fragrance oils, but it's true. I love them and this is one of my absolute all-time loves. I can't help it. I love this. Um, 
So this was actually one of the very first fragrances I ever ordered from Nature's Fragrance. And this is this was one of those fragrances where I opened the cap and I was like, sold! Love this company. So um, this is what I'm going to be using in my little soapy creation today. But um, as I said, you're more than welcome to use any fragrance oil that you love. Um, so I went through and I found... A, um, a ton of nature's fragrance fragrance oils that would go amazing in a beer soap recipe so I went ahead and I made a list for you guys I am going to pop that list up after I get done rambling here and um, if you would like any kind of inspiration for maybe a different fragrance oil that you want to use in your own beer soap project um, you know pause the, the screen, pause the video, look through that list and uh, find some inspiration. But for today, I'm using my inspiration, which is shave and a haircut, or shave and haircut, I'm sorry. Um, but yeah, before I get too excited and too ahead of myself, I'm gonna get this ready and um, I will bring you back for when I make the actual lye solution with the beer so you can see how that's done. And uh, yeah, let's let's get this party started. All right, let's get to making some soap. So I wanted to show you specifically how the uh, beer portion of this goes. And to be honest, it goes the same exact way as it goes when you're soaping with water. So I've got here, I already weighed it out. I put a little bit of Tessa silk in it. Um, I've got my slushy beer that has been um, carbonation removed, alcohol has been boiled out of it, we're ready to go. I'm using this as my full liquid today, but um, as I mentioned earlier, you're more than welcome to sub out some of your liquid for your beer or all of your liquid for your beer, whichever you prefer. So in this particular recipe, I'll be using or subbing out the full amount of my liquid for the beer. So I need to get the lye added to it. So keep in mind, this is very, very icy cold, and that's the best way to start in my experience and just my personal opinion with um, making your lye solution with a beer base. So let me weigh out my lye. All right, so I've got my lye weighed out. I am ready to add it to my icy cold slushy beer. And just go ahead and slowly add that in. And just give it a good stir. You just want to make sure when you're stirring your lye solution, and this just goes for any time you're making soap, that you make sure the lye completely dissolves. And in this case, since I have added a little bit of Tessa silk fibers too, it takes a little bit more stirring to just make sure all those Tessa silk fibers have fully uh, dissolved as well. But yeah, it's just the same. Um, same process that you would do if you were making soap with water. Just add your lye to the liquid carefully. Carefully stir that in. Stir it until it is completely dissolved and let it cool down. So I went ahead and I took my lye solutions temperature and it is at 180 degrees Fahrenheit right now. So yeah. Adding that or using the beer when it's at um, either frozen or slushy consistency or in a slushy state, um, just so much more beneficial because can you imagine how much hotter this solution would have become if I were using something maybe that was from the fridge or even at room temperature. So definitely my best advice that I can give um, when it comes to making beer soaps is to um, use Agilai when your beer is either frozen or slushy. 
And um, yeah, from here on out, I'm just gonna get this cooled down and I'm gonna bring you guys back when uh, we're all ready to go. All right, we're ready to go. So I have got my soap making base oils. They are all mixed together and cooled down to room temp and my lye solution. My beery lye solution has also cooled down to room temperature. So let's get to soap making. So my idea for today's soapy theme is uh, I kind of figured I would embrace the cliche and I'm going to make this a black and tan soap. So let's get started on uh, making something special with this. Uh, so I'm going to add my lye solution directly to my melted base oils. And give it a good stir by hand before I hit it with my stick blender just to get everything all nice and incorporated looking good so now I am going to stick blend this till eh, past emulsion uh, to a light trace Till just past emulsion. Batter is still nice and fluid, and I'm going to split this off into two separate portions. My bottom half is going to be black, and my top half is going to be tan. And it doesn't have to be perfect science. I am just going to eyeball it half and half. All right, so I have split my soap batter off into two eyeballed equal portions. So I'm gonna put one of these off to the side and I am going to mix in my black. I am gonna be using uh, nocturnal black mica from the two soap. Give it a little mix again. And get this stirred in. And then I'm going to pour off half of my fragrance oil. It has kaolin clay in it to act as a fixative. Get that stirred in there really, really well. Oh, it smells so much better with that fragrance oil added in. Let's get this portion poured into my mold. Every little bit of it in there. As much as I possibly can. Ooh, now this is smelling really good. I gotta admit, it was not smelling that great a couple, couple minutes ago. But with the fragrance oil in there, oh, amazing. World of difference. Lovely. I'm just going to give this a good pat. And quickly do a... Oh, where's my spoon? A mica line in the soup. Do a mica line of... Um, what is this? This is Maya Gold. Just to add a little bit of separation between those layers. All right, so I've added down my little Maya Gold uh, mica line, and now I'm going to do my top layer. And for the tan portion, I'm using uh, Nurture Soap's uh, Honey Blush mica.
So I've got the honey blush stirred in. I'm going to add the last of the fragrance oil. Get in there. Every last drop. Get this nice and stirred in as well. And I will get this poured over my black portion. So just to break the fall, I'm going to pour it over my spatula here. Okay, good. And hopefully that didn't disrupt the mica line. So I'm just going to pat this down. Make sure it's all nice and level. So we're in my corners here. All right, so the main portion of my soap is poured, and you guys know me, I always like to do something with my tops, but um, I'm actually not going to pipe the top of this soap in the traditional way that I normally do. Instead, I thought it would look really cool to just kind of dollop some soap on top of it to kind of make it resemble like a big foamy glass of beer. So um, when this sets up a little bit more, I'll bring you guys back and we'll finish up the top with All right, so I whipped up a little extra bit of soap here. Well, not a little bit, but I whipped up some extra soap here and I didn't want it to be like stark, stark white because uh, foam on the top of beer isn't stark white. So I colored it with a mica called Champagne Mica from Mad Micas, and I think it's the perfect foam color. So I'm just gonna kinda layer this on top of it in no rhyme or reason type of fashion. I'm just gonna start at the ends. We are having this huge electrical storm right now, and I am totally freaked out that we are going to lose power. So I'm just trying to hurry this along before that happens. Hopefully it doesn't happen. Okay, so I have just put dollops of um, some soap on top of the main batch of soap. Just uh, took my spatula and got it on there. I'm going to take a little spoon here and I'm just going to add a little bit of, little bit of texture to it. All right, so I have textured the top of my little soap dollops and it is looking wonderfully unorganized, which is exactly what I was going for. So for the final finishing touch, I am just going to add just, just a little bit of sparkle because, you know, what's a soap without a little bit of sparkle? Am I right? I'm going to add, it is, um, hmm, what's it called? Gold Enigma Enviro Glitter from Nurture Soap. So I'm just going to give that a little dusting. Just to kind of make it look a little bubbly, I guess. Alright, so I've added a little bit of gold sparkle to my um, soap foam. <laughs> And it's looking bubbly and foamy and perfect. So I am going to get this sprayed with some 91% rubbing alcohol and get it lightly insulated. It is a beer soap, so keep in mind those sugars are going to warm up. So you don't want to, like things like C-pop, you might not want to do with a beer base just because of the fact that beer is going to get hot on its own anyway. 
Um, and if you're worried about overheating, you can even pop this in the fridge at this point too. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get it sprayed with rubbing alcohol and I'm just gonna get it lightly insulated and I'll bring you guys back in about 18, 24 hours. We will unmold this and we'll cut this up and see if it's any good. So I'll see you guys in 18 to 24 hours. We're back the next day and our soap is ready to cut. It is looking awesome. Loving the little straight layer going on. So I'm gonna get this cut up and we'll see what it's looking like on the inside. Actually, for this one, I am gonna turn it over on its side to cut it. Reason being because of that mica line that we put down in the middle of it I don't want it to smear when I slice it. So I'm gonna lay it on its side so that it doesn't do that So I just cut off a little end piece to be this scent to me is not just for guys. I Love this fragrance so much. It smells so good. I'm really excited because it's just it's smelling amazing today and looking good so let's get that first official cut so here's what it looks like on the inside we've got our black portion down here we've got a little bit of a mica line we've got our tan we've got our quote unquote foam which is actually soap our soapy foam then on the top, um, I went ahead and added a little bit of um, brown mica to the top, just a little sprinkle, just to kind of give it a little bit of a flare or, you know, just something different because I can't ever just leave something alone when I'm finished with it. Finished. But yeah, so that's what, that's what it looks like on the inside. I'm going to get the rest of this cut up. It smells, it smells amazing. I am not going to sugarcoat it. It smells amazing. Oh, it smells, it, it smells so good. It smells great. So for me, this is, this is such an excellent fragrance oil for beer soaps because it is wonderfully potent and fragrant in the soaps. Any kind of scent that the beer might initially impart in the soap. I can't detect at all. And it's just looking, it's just looking really cool. I'm, I'm happy with how this turned out. So yeah, I'm going to get these cut up and I'll take uh, some pictures of it. So hopefully you guys can see it a little bit closer because I know my camera isn't that great. But um, that is making beer soap. So if you've never tried uh, beer soap before and you would like to I really really hope that you found this video helpful in some small way and Thank you guys so so much for watching and we will uh, see you guys next time on my next soapy adventures